Hey guys, um, let's see, I'm here at Emerald Isle, North Carolina, the end of another beautiful, beautiful beach day. Um, I've been out here for about 10 days and I just keep booking a house after house after a house. I'm hoping to spend um, uh, the time that I have left out here at the beach and then we'll return to Durham when it's time for me to go in hospice care. So yeah, I know I'm starting right off with the sort of the tough part, but it is, it's the truth of, of where things are. So I'll just give you a little update. I'm doing really well. Um, for those of you who have asked or would like to know, um, the whole story in January, completely out of the blue and unexpectedly, I was told I had pancreatic cancer in stage four. Um, and my particular cancer is located in the worst possible place it could be. So surgery was out of the question. And um, the chemotherapy um, options were not, good enough uh, for me to accept in terms of quality of life. So I've decided to just um, live each day as best I can. Um, and I know it's coming and that it's coming sooner than later. Um, and I've really been blessed because I have found sort of a reservoir of strength and acceptance and most importantly, gratitude, real gratitude. Uh, and that is what's getting me through as well as all of the wonderful videos and video messages that you guys sent um, and emails that I've received. It, it's been tremendously moving to me and I wanna thank you so much for that because it helps so much. Um, I, I've just been so startled because some of you I haven't seen in years and years. So know that that really touches me. Um, and I can't reply to all of your emails um, or keep up with them, but it doesn't mean that um, I, I care any less or, or that, you know, they mean a lot. So keep those emails coming. Um, those of you who pray, that's that's very important to me. And those of you who just send your good thoughts and I know that you're thinking about me, it's, it's really tremendous. So thank you for that. Um, I, uh, I don't know uh, really much what else to tell you about, except maybe that um, my doctors seem to be quite taken with me because evidently, um, they almost never see an oncology patient who doesn't say, keep me alive as long as you can. Um, and so my saying, oh, look, if I have under a year, I'm not gonna try to be miserable half of the time to add an extra month or two. Um, and so I started really trying to figure out why am I so different? Why is it that so many people um, don't find that acceptance or or what now, if I had a son's wedding to go to on a certain date, I'd want them to keep me alive that long or, or a daughter graduating from college or something like that. But as a single woman who's, you know, kind of lived my life on my own terms and all, I, I don't feel like I have something left that I have to get done. Obviously it's a huge disappointment. Uh, a shock and a disappointment. I had, sure, a lot of other things that I still wanted to do, but many of those things are things I've already done, like travel through Europe and go to Greece and, and rent houses in beautiful places. Um, and it is sort of a drag that I bought my first house in September, started to feel ill in November, and then got this diagnosis in January. So I just sold my house um, in 24 hours. I'm glad to say, because the, the market is so good right now. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't really know what makes me that different. Part of it is my family and how I was raised in the beautiful way that my father 
um, raised us and how he passed last year. And part of it is, I think that it really does help to know I lived my life on my own terms. And so if there's anything that I would say to you guys, it's take risks and try to do that. Um, a friend just this afternoon, who I think I referenced earlier, um, asked me a bit about that. And I said, well, you know, it is a miracle I ever left Michigan. I mean, I, I grew up in such a simple middle class, I don't know, never would have expected to move to New York City. And yet I did and flourished. And then I certainly never thought I would um, open my own studio. I mean, I left a job that was, my bonus was the same as my salary. I was making so much money at this financial firm during the day and then trying to teach classes at night, obviously after I'd done all my Meisner training. And um, I took my last bonus um, and walked into my boss and said, this is my two weeks notice. I, I wanna try doing what I love every single day. And um, I was fortunate enough that I'd already been teaching for my teacher. And then when I left him, I was still teaching part-time. So, so I didn't have, I wasn't going from, I had something which is an understanding of how to teach Meisner. Um, and this bonus that I hoped would get me through a year where I wouldn't have to pay myself. And it worked. I thought I'd be bankrupt in six months, but I, I knew I had to try it. I knew I had to, you know, I could go back to a bread and butter job, but I didn't want to be 60 um, and not have tried to do what I really love. So I did that and that, I mean, that was just a miracle and it worked. And not only did I, you know, have this robust training program, but I started to create theater. I mean, I directed some traditional stuff, but I, I created new theater. And if I, I think now like, oh, what if I'd never created all those shows? That would have just been such a loss. Um, and so I won that bet. I put all the chips down on, a creative life instead of a safe life. And so now having cancer at age 61, it's like, wow, yes. Thank God I'm not still working at the financial firm because then I think I would feel a terrible, terrible loss that, you know, my death was coming up so soon. I probably thought I would, you know, do more theater after I retired or something. So, so that was a, you know, a big, um, a big risk. And then I guess, you know, when my Australian students suggested that I should uh, apply for uh, their distinguished talent visa, which would allow me to live in Australia the rest of my life and open the studio there, it was kind of like, cool, you know? I'd sort of done New York and I was 50 or thereabouts, I guess. And, um, and thought, well, gosh, that's, that's something I certainly never thought that I would do. So of course, I, I, um, I applied and it's a really hard application process. And about seven months into it, I was ready to give up. I'm like, this is just getting ridiculous, the documentation that they want and stuff. I don't know if I can keep doing this. And um, I had friends that said, well, you're this close, you know, just finish the process. And if they don't give it to you, no big deal. And then my lawyer called a couple months later and she was floored. She said, oh my God, you got this visa, you know, fly over here so that, you know, you can get it all set up officially. And I did that and then, um, you know, moved to Australia, went back and forth between Australia Australia and New York until I decided, yeah, I really was too American to live in Australia the, the rest of my life. But to all my dear Australian students um, who I taught and those of you who are so, so, so close to me, I miss you and I did really want to get back to Melbourne. Um, don't think it's going to happen. Um, but you know how much I loved being with you and and living there and 
I should have made more of a point of getting back there in the last five years and I didn't. Um, so, and then comes Durham and, you know, the shows that I did in Australia were just, you know, in Philly, I lived in Philly for a while. So doing all of those shows and doing my signature piece, I wish you a boat in every single city. Sorry, my phone is going off. Um, let me just pause this for a second. So as I was saying, to being able to do, you know, I wish you a boat and, um, at the hand of my mother, you know, almost home. Those are just magnificent experiences. It was so exciting to have Australia, you know, embrace my original theater. And so when I came to, you know, Durham, I had yet another venue and new students and new shows that we created. And I think that the last show that I did, which was um, the fall of 2019, Infinite Possibilities was, you know, it was a comedy and it was great. It was probably one of the best shows that I've done. And I really wanted to do Infinite Possibilities too. But of course, COVID hit and I sort of just it was a natural transition for me to just do everything online because fortunately, a few years ago, I purchased onlineactingclasses.com. So I was already doing a lot of the work online. And so it was obviously very easy for us. And some of you who are listening to me, I haven't even met in person. I've only trained you online. And, and it, it's, it's just been such a great uh, joy to translate the Meisner word to an online platform and see that no matter anyone wants to tell you, it works. The most important stuff that you can still in an actor from the Meisner point of view can be done online. Um, and as I sit here, you know, I, as you guys know, I kind of closed down even the online classes a few weeks ago because I just didn't, I didn't have the energy to keep doing them. And as I sit here, just kind of talking to you virtually, because I'm actually just looking at a blank screen, um, I'm like, oh, maybe you could just, you could still just do a couple more classes or you could find a way to, you know, work with your students, have you guys do something, I don't know. I have to think about it because I really have to reserve my strength right now. Um, so um, back to, I guess, what I started with, which is I'm so grateful for everything that's happened in my life and all of the good things that, that didn't happen just because I took risks. It happened because I was fortunate. I was very fortunate and lucky. But all of you um, made my life very, very rich and creative and exciting and fun. <laughs> so I don't have, this is, isn't a tragedy to me. It's just sad and a little disappointing. <laughs> so um, see if you can take some risks. Believe in yourself. Don't be a people pleaser. Don't be an asshole, but don't be a pe people pleaser. You know what you're capable of and do your work, show up prepared, meet the standards of my studio and casting directors will trust you. They'll trust that you're gonna be prepared. You're gonna turn out a good self tape. You're gonna be on time to the, to the callback and that you do your, you'll do your work. You know, do not get sloppy. Practice your skills. They'll go away. If you don't practice emotional preparation, it'll go away. Do your particularization. Yes, it takes more time. It makes a difference to do all that specific work. So you've got to keep using your notebook. You know, pair it with Sandy's book. And even as you go and you work with people who, you know, have a, a different approach and, and way of working, it doesn't mean you can't still be using your Meisner work. Your Meisner work is your foundation. So you can learn other stuff on top. You can layer on other people's wonderful advice on top. And I know that you will do that. So thank you for, for all. I just love seeing where you are and hearing what you're doing. It blows me away when I see some of you with your kids. That's so exciting to me. And as all my friends have remarked, like people from all over the world, it's really, it's really been grand, guys.
So I thank you from the bottom of my heart.